Rashawn McDonald is back on Money Making Conversations. I'm back. My uh, guest is online. You know, she's a friend, like a longtime friend who's now a, a food television star now. You know, you know, you meet people regularly, and then all of a sudden they're on TV. You go, I know them. Wow, you know, that's really crazy. Say the word, chef, and traditionally it conjures up images of a big white hat atop a restaurant chef. However, the recipe of this dynamic chef goes against all tradition. She is known for her bold flavors and sassy personality, to say the least. Beginning her professional career as a corporate marketing executive, she gave it up, a lucrative job, to pursue her passion for food and cooking to enter, enter the culinary industry. Her classical, see, I'm not a classical trained uh, anybody, but she is, including studying in European countries such as Venice, Italy, and Vienna, Australia, and, uh, and Vienna, Australia, and graduation from the International Culinary Schools at the Art Institute of Atlanta. She's also worked for the renowned Rich Carlton Hotel. Please welcome to Money Making Conversation, one of the co-hosts of the popular Food Network show, Let's Eat, Chef Jamika. Well, hello there. Come on back. <laughs> She's back. I'm back, baby. <laughs> September, for, I got you in September and I got you back. You know, Thanksgiving week. I know. Can you smell the turkey in the air? <laughs> Come on now. Come on now. Come on now. I got this big spread. I'm just going just, to just let them you know. I got a spread I'm doing for my staff. I got, I'm deep frying three turkeys. Wow. I'm getting up at 2 o'clock in the morning, girl, 2 o'clock in the morning. I've done my prep work. That's key. I'm just, she'll tell you, prep work when you're doing <laughs> something big is key. And I, I, I already did my pea and onion salad layout. I've already done my tiki and my pita bread. I'm doing that when I get oh, home. Are you ready? I, that's already laid out. I already did my cornbread. I baked that yesterday for my dressing and everything because I put cranberries in my dressing. I put pork oh, sausage, nice. that sage pork sausage. I put celery. I put onions in there. So that, that that's that's already set aside. Then I got to dive into the desserts. There you go. See, and I feel like there's two different types of people for Thanksgiving. It's the people like you that are ready, that are planned, and they're ready to go. And then it's the one panicking, like, oh, no, what am I supposed to do? Okay. I don't know what to cook a turkey. Like, that, it's two types of people. So okay. Okay. I, you already got your set. So I'm here to help those people that are kind of That's what I'm out talking about. Because you don't, don't talk to Rashawn. <laughs> but first, before we start talking about that, let's talk about your show, your TV show. I got to see it again. How's everything going? With are you excited? Uh, how's it, because you were saying digitally, it was blowing up on, on, on oh, digital. Oh, yes. it, Tell us it's, about it. I mean, it's it's such a blessing. I mean, it's called Let's Eat, and I'm co-hosting with two other dynamic hosts, and it's on the Food Network app, and you can see it online. So a lot of people are like, oh, I, I, I missed the show on TV. I'm like, nope, you're never going to miss the show because it's always <laughs> on your phone. I'm always with you. Any time you want to see me and cook with me, mm -hmm. I'm right there. So we do all different types of food, and we have lots of fun, and we give lots of recipe ideas and tips and stuff like that. So I, that's why I'm here today. I'm like, I want to give people lots of ideas to, to kind of take that stress away from the holidays because you really should be having a good time with family not worrying about how you're going to get this done and and cooking and burning stuff like it shouldn't be that type of holiday it should be a fun time you know well it's a fun time for people who want to eat okay oh, every, yeah, like everybody want to eat everybody want to eat good food now it's the food out there should be <laughs> kept out of people's hands before it's destroyed <laughs> i'm going to go on and say that too but before we go any further i know i made a commitment to you your brand that i was supported mm -hmm. On my social media. Uh, have yes, I been delivering have. on that? Absolutely. And I appreciate people like you because you have such a dynamic platform and you extend that out to people such as myself. So every Wednesday you have been profiling a recipe and it's been such a great response. I mean, people in the comments like, I want to make that. I made that and it turned out great. So I'm so grateful to you for doing that and you keep your word. So I appreciate well, that. I, well, I appreciate you doing it because of the fact that my fans, they, they're, they're a curious group. You know, they're an opinionated group too. And they want to, <laughs> if they make something, I can make it better. I go, come on, man. come on. Man. We ain't, don't be challenging me. I'm just putting it out here just to let you know there are people out there who don't know how to cook. And that's mm -hmm. what, that's, that's your role in life. The role in life is not, they're professional out there. Or people who think they're professional you're not going to change their mind. You know, they got recipes. You yeah. know, they don't even pull out a, 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 a cup or a teaspoon. They just start making stuff. You know, just they'll say, I, I, I love watching uh, some cooking show. They'll say a half a cup, and they just grab something with their hand and just put it in there. 
Okay, where or a the pinch cook? of this right. or a splash of that. Like, that's just cooking with instinct. Right, and, right. And you can't really teach that. It's just <laughs> a gut feeling you got to know. But everybody doesn't have that. So for the people that don't have it, they have to follow a recipe, that's okay, too. You can me- get your teaspoons and measuring cups, and you can flow right along with us. And, you know, our relationship is long-term because we met mm-hmm. when I was, uh, you know, running the uh, co-created the Steve Harvey Morning Show with Steve Harvey, and I was executive producer and uh, used to come over there and because uh, Hillshire Farm. We had to deal with Hillshire. Yes. Farm and used to make the recipes. Now, at the time, where were you at in transitioning? Because of the fact that I knew you was had a had a you know corporate job. So what I want to just talk about a little bit about that too, because a lot of people are, are sitting and listening to this show, trying to make decisions, or afraid to make decisions about mm-hmm. what they really want to do versus what they're actually doing currently. How did you make that decision? Well, and you know what, I think for anybody listening, if you're wondering, like, should I do this, can I do this, this is the best time to do that. In 2019, I am encouraging everybody to take that leap of faith because it wasn't, and it's not easy for anybody. It definitely wasn't easy for me. I mean, I started, I had my degree in marketing, and I thought that's what I wanted to do, but I found myself going to a job every day, and I'm like, this is not, this is, can't be the rest of my life. I'm not being fulfilled. I'm sitting at a desk. This is not my purpose. And I wasn't really sure what I fully wanted to do, and I definitely wasn't thinking about being on television, I just knew that that wasn't the right place for me. And when they started laying people off because businesses started going mm-hmm. crazy, and it was like, this is your moment. They, they were like, we can demote you, and you can stay, or you can just just take your papers and go. And no. I was the only person <laughs> in the office that, was, that raised my hand and was like, let me go. Mm-hmm. And in that moment, I, wasn't, I still wasn't sure. And you don't have to have a 100% of a plan. You just got to start walking by faith. Because you know what you're capable of. You know that you're, if you, you want to be a chef or you want to be a cook, you know what your talents, you know what you're good at. And that's what you're supposed to pursue. You really should be happy every day about what you're doing. Me right now, I am living the dream. I mean, I started my own business um, as a personal chef and a caterer and transitioned that into auditioning for reality TV shows on, on the Food Network and just doing those, those things. You, you never know where they're going to take you. And from that, I mean, years later, I'm still on television, and now I'm doing bigger and better things, appearing on daytime talk shows. I'm going to be on Good Morning America on Thursday cooking for Thanksgiving. I'm mm-hmm. like, cool. That is uh. a dream. Well, so, so when you going to slip that in? There's that nowhere on my paper here about this There's nowhere on your paper. Well, that, well I just slipped that in because I'm just so excited because it's blessings like that. I'm like, that mm-hmm. is one of my dream morning shows. And then to get an email like, we want you to come cook for Thanksgiving. And you can't write that. You can't, you can't plan that. That is just being a part of the process and walking in faith. And you just got to see where God takes you. And that's really how I ended up where I am. Well, good. Let's talk about what you're going to make on Good Morning America <laughs> this Thanksgiving Thursday. What are you going to make on Good Morning America? Well, the thing is, we're, I'm, I really want, I'm, I'm calling myself the Chef Jimmy. I, I am your 911 survival guide. Like, <laughs> it's really about people that, like I said, that, want, that start to panic. And it can be a lot of pressure, especially if this is your first time cooking for something. You've got a lot of family coming over, mm-hmm. and you're, like, you're starting to feel that anxiety of, oh, I don't want to ruin this. So you want to pull it off. So that's really what I'm here to kind of put people at ease and let you know it's okay. It's just a turkey. He can't beat you. Like, you can do this. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, <laughs> but mm-hmm. it's really about getting everything in order. So you got to, and I call it the three P's. We're going to plan, we're going to prep, and then it's time to party, y'all. That's mm-hmm. really what it is. And, <laughs> and, you, and, and it's Monday, so you should already have your checklist. You should already gone shopping and, and making sure that everything is in place so that the last minute you're not sending somebody to the store like, oh, go get me some sugar. Oh, right. go get me some flour. Oh, like, yes. if you're doing that, you're, it's going to start to fall apart. You better be ready to rock and roll. Mm-hmm. Now, now, I was looking at the note, the sweet potato bread pudding. Mm-hmm. <laughs> now, I'm going to tell you something. I, I, I do, the, I do uh, raisin bread pudding, mm-hmm. and I do a sweet potato pie. Okay. Seems like you put those together without the raisins. <laughs> Oh, it, it's the most amazing dessert because it's like a sweet potato pie meets your grandma's bread pudding. And okay. you can do pumpkin in there, too, if, you, if you're Ooh. a pumpkin person. Because you know it's a battle of the sweet potato and the pumpkin. Ooh, so it depends yeah. on where you live, yeah, you go. what you're going to put in there. there. You go. <laughs> now, can you, can, you, can, you, can you walk me through that step? Because, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm putting my... My Chef Rushan hat on, you know. Okay. Well, okay, let me walk, walk me through, through that. Like I said, I know how to do the sweet potato pie. I know how to do the, because I'm going to make a sweet potato pie for my, my staff tomorrow, and I'm going to mm-hmm. make the, the raisin bread pudding. Tell me, how is that done? How do you make that? Well, you're going to start with, um, you're going to peel and dice about a pound of sweet potatoes, and you can boil them off just to get them fork tender. If I'm in a rush, I even pop them in the microwave for about six to eight minutes just to get them mm. soft. Mm. And 
So you, you're going to leave the sweet potatoes there, and then you're going to start on your bread pudding. So you can use a day-old bread, a French bread, Italian bread, any type of crusty bread that you have, thick cut, and you'll do maybe about six to eight cups of that. And then you start with the bread pudding part. So you know you've got to have your milk in there. Mm-hmm. We can do sugar. Brown I do cinnamon. sweetened condensed milk, sweetened I mean, um, cinnamon. Mm-hmm. And you know what my secret is? Mm-hmm. Everybody write this down. It is freshly grated nutmeg. Not just the mm-hmm. one you shake out of there. You take that mm-hmm. microplane, you, you get that nutmeg, and you grate it across the top. That is what's going to take your bread pudding to the next level where people are like, mm, what is that? Because it's just so distinct in that flavor. You're going to combine the sweet potatoes with your bread and all your milk and your sugar and everything and soak that in there for about 30 minutes, mm-hmm. and you're going to break, bake it in your baking dish. It, same way you would do your regular bread pudding. And the, the, the sweet potato just adds a little bit of color, a little bit of flair, a little more texture, a little more sweetness to it. And you'll bake it off in the other oven until it is beautiful golden brown. And you know it's ready because the whole house smells just like heaven. I mean, it is just bubbling delicious. And I love to top it off. I put a little bourbon in mine. You, mm-hmm. If you want to kick it up get enough. Drunk, get drunk. Oh, now, you, now, we can top. <laughs> it, it, now, you got to warn people. Don't let the kids get this, but I do it at the end. So mm. if you want to do a quick sauce, right. this is the fastest thing you've ever imagined. You get a cup of vanilla ice cream and you let it melt. And you're like, wait a minute, what you going to do with that? Thought you leave the ice cream home. No, this is going to make, you know, like that creme anglaise, that French sauce that you can make and you got to cook it over the stove for a long time. Right. We're not doing that. Melt some vanilla ice cream, add a shot of bourbon to it. And when people start spooning out their bread pudding, just drizzle a little bit of that on top. So you get that shot of that bourbon creaminess of the, the vanilla ice cream mm-hmm. and then that deliciously sweet golden brown bread pudding. Now, if I, that don't make you hungry right now. Something's wrong. Well, it makes me hungry. makes me mad now. Yeah, don't okay. get mad. I gotta don't get mad get now. Mad. First of all, my fans are listening to this, so I gotta do like the television show. Are you gonna send a photo of the dessert and a recipe so I can post this on social media? Will this be your Wednesday post this week? I will make sure that this is my Wednesday post. Thank I will you. not tease your listeners and not give them this, this as the Wednesday post. So everybody can make the sweet potato bread pudding for their family, and you add that little shot of bourbon in there right at the end. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I see the word shot. You got to be worried about it. Some people shots are different shots now. Don't make yeah, it soggy. Yeah. Don't make it soggy now. Don't make it don't soggy. Don't make it soggy, and you don't want to be tipsy and say Chef Jamaica did it. I will not take the Absolutely. blame for that. No. So <laughs> she's on the phone with me again. She's she's my favorite chef in the world, Chef Jamaica. She'll be on Good Morning America this Thursday. We'll be coming right back. We'll be talking more about... Uh, the many desserts, uh, but she was just on the haunted uh, gingerbread showdown, which yeah, really, there's so many different shows on Food Network you, that I'm every, doing. You're doing so many <laughs> things, and we're gonna be right back with the wonderful Chef Jamaica. I discovered, her. I discovered her on the Steve Harvey Morning Show. I'm, I'm, I'm laying claim to your to your fame now, girl. Be right back, money making conversation for Sean McDonald, the one and only. Now I'm back, now I'm back. I'm back. I'm hungry. I'm hungry. I'm hungry. <laughs> you always hungry. I'm always hungry. <laughs> Jeff Jamaica, I'm hungry. You know some. I, I really. I, you know some. I, I'm so proud of you. I'm proud Thank of you, you because I I met you at the infancy stage of where you're. Because you're not finished. You, we all know oh, you're not absolutely finished. absolutely not. not. Finished. We're just getting started, and, and, really. And, and, and I always I always look at because I because I, I noticed in your bio that in 2006 that's when you created your company Life of the Party as a personal chef. A personal chef services. That was mm-hmm. 2006. And I met you around about 2007-ish, <laughs> 8, okay? Yeah. Because we had closed that Hillshire Farm uh, deal and it was in Atlanta. We had moved our headquarters down here. So so along the way, I, I, I would see you always popping up on this dessert show. You talk about your favorite <laughs> dessert. And you just always stayed in the lane. And, I, and I'm telling you, I would look at you and go, because I've always had your number on my phone, you know. And, and so and I was just proud to see you just staying committed to the task and seeing how you do that. And so what advice would you give people? Because we all know there aren't happy moments along the way consistently. Mm-hmm. There are frustration moments. How did you overcome that? And because we all know also that it's a lot of people out there can cook or think they can cook. It's a lot of people with great or big personalities. How have you been able to build your niche? 
Well, you know what, and, and so many people come up to me or, or they email me like, oh, I read your story and, and I was so inspired. And it's not just people that want to cook. Like people come to me like, oh, I've always wanted to do hair, but I went and got a corporate job and now I've started my own salon. So I really tell people like I am here to inspire you for whatever it is that you're excited to do. It doesn't really matter as long as you're excited to do something. And for me, it definitely wasn't easy. And, I mean, we've been on a journey for a, for a minute with mm-hmm. these people like, oh, you're an overnight success. I'm like, no. Oh, y'all just been sleeping on us <laughs> all this time. <laughs> yes, but no, yes. I, I feel like every time I wanted to give up and it got hard, there'd be one little thing that come up and it'd be like, you know, I can't do this anymore. The money's not coming in right and things are go- I'm just going to stop and do something else. And then I'd get a call to, to do a show here or to be on the news here. And those little things, you need them because they just kind of encourage you to let you know you're doing the right thing and to stay on that path and don't give up. And there'll be little things that people, someone will say, something to you, something small will happen, and it's just the way of the, the universe or God, whatever you believe in, is just kind of mm-hmm. nudging you to say, keep doing what you're doing. I have greater things for you, but you've got to stay faithful to the, to, to the purpose and, and the path. You've got to go through the process. You can't avoid it. Like, everybody wants to jump in leaps and bounds. and You mm-hmm. can't skip the line on the process. You no. have to go through it. But once you get to the front of that line on it, it's a glorious thing. And you're so, you're, you're, you're proud of yourself because you know you accomplished something, and you're supposed to share your story with other people to inspire them. So that's really why I do what I do. Just inspire other people to do what they need to do. And then feed them. Feed them. There you go. Feed but them. that's how I get people to the table. Mm-hmm. Everybody wants to come with food, and then once I get you to sit down, then I tell you a story, then I feed your soul. See, that's how you get them. You got to oh, get them with the food good. first, then you good. feed the soul. See, I didn't remember this when I first met her. You know, she was a little rusty back in the day. She, rusty. She, 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 she got a story. Ten years later, this girl can talk. Boy, she know the end sentences correctly, man. She's a motivator. But, you know, Chef, I, I, I tease when I say that because of the fact that even back then, when I we roughly a 10-year relationship we've had. Mm-hmm. It's just that you always you knew your craft. You always was polished. She always had to look. You know, she come through that door. You know, hair was right, makeup right, clothes hey, right. Cook good, look good. That's but, what you got to do. And she did it too. <laughs> there was no doubt about it. But whatever. But she wanted to make sure she did the proper work for the client. In other words, Absolutely. she never. She never got bigger than this, the, the moment. And a lot of people do that. You know, they want to, or they use the client to get to a situation. They try to like put the client in the background. And that's what a lot of people make mistakes with these opportunities. They call flash in the, flash in the pan. And because yeah. relationships really is why you're here today. The relationship is why, why she's on the show with me. Was, we had a great relationship back then. And now she's on my show. I have a relationship with now. I'm a, I have a relationship with a chef about to go on Good Morning America this Thursday. Now, you yeah. know, we winning here. I'm winning, she winning. Everybody, it, it, and everybody can win. That's the beautiful thing. It is enough room for everybody to win. Cool. Now, with that being <laughs> said, what, 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 just talk about this 100 House and this gingerbread show because the reason I'm asking is that, you know, television is interesting because, you know, they, they, they make, make it seem like things happen very fast. And I oh, see, and I see these uh, these designs. What when, when you did the show? What what leaped out to you the most about these designs and these creative people who come on these shows? Because they just everyday people who've been selected to come on these shows to compete. Yeah, you know, I think what impressed me the most was the stories, how everybody had a different background. Some people, it was their first time in a competition doing gingerbread houses, or people have been doing it for years, and they mm-hmm. have made this their craft, and every year they're, they're, it gets bigger and more creative. So I, I really was just, like, to hear people where they come from and why they're doing what they do, like, that, that's the most amazing thing to me. I think when I go out and I travel and I do all these shows on Cooking Channel and Food Network, and I go to restaurants, it's really, I, I enjoy meeting people and just hearing how they got there and what it is they're trying to accomplish. And, and so many other people, like, these are not, you know, people casted from wherever. Like, these are regular people. So if it's something that you're interested in, you see these shows and you sit at home like, I could have done that. Right. Well, I could have done that. I encourage everybody, apply for these shows. They really will call you back. You're that good. They will call you back because they want, it, the network can't, and the shows can't flourish without people like you that put them themselves out there and that's how i got my start was putting myself out there for a competition show oh you so did a competition show I'm yeah, i started my career back in with food network 
when I did Food Network Star way um, back um, in the day um, geez, um, on season yeah. five. So that's how millions of people just got to know my name and see me. Mm-hmm. And it's just been going one show after the other after the other from that. I, it's I don't really, accept rejection. I, I, start. I, I don't have and rejection. Now I get to be, mm-hmm. The great thing is I get to be in the judge's mm-hmm. seat now. I don't have to compete <laughs> like I used to. <laughs> so it's nice to be on the other side of the table. Yeah, but but it's, it's, that's how we get started. So I really encourage people, apply for these shows because right. they really will call you. And they have. I'm going to tell you something. They've called me three times to compete. And I'm not, I just, you know, I said, no, I can't compete. You know, because, thing, I'm going to tell you this, Chef, now, you know, that, that's hard, that competition is hard. Now, I'm going to just let everybody know that, you know, you really have, you have to be on top. You have to take criticism publicly and on tape correctly. Yeah. That, that's, tough to tough that's tough for me. That's tough for me. But the thing is, the, when, you, I, when I first started, I mm-hmm. was nervous about doing competition. But I said to myself, if I can do this, yes, I can do anything. Mm-hmm. And that's really what it's about. The, the shows that you go on, they're, they're really not there to make you look like a complete idiot. Like, they're not going to sabotage you and hide your food and take your stuff. If you know what you, <laughs> they do their very best, because they want to make good TV. Mm-hmm. Like, they do their very mm-hmm. best to make you shine. I mean, you, so you show, all you have to do is show up, know your stuff. And, I mean, the clock is ticking, but you just keep going. Like, you can't, there's so many things that are happening around you. You can't let those things get to you. And you do one competition, you're like, you know what, that wasn't so bad. And you it's like getting a tattoo. You want another one? You want to do another one and another you're one? You're funny. You're, you're funny. You, you know, I'm telling you, 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 you're a good salesman, too. You're a good salesman, boy. I tell you hey, right now. I, but, I'm just here to motivate the world. That's all I want to do. But it's hard being a judge, too. Food. I've seen you judge now. It's hard being a judge because usually like three of you guys. And it each, is. And, each and th- all three of you guys got to take it. You can't, uh, can you agree? Or you kind of like agree, but you d- d- agree in different ways, correct? No, it of course with editing, it looks like we make that decision in 14 seconds. Right. But there's a lot of times we go back and forth, and it's two against one, and then it's one. Like we we have to write it down. We have to start from scratch and do numbers. Like wait a minute, it's it's not an easy task, and I I take it to heart because I know these people have a story. They're there to get that money or win that prize for for whatever thing that they're hoping for. And I'm a dreamer myself, so I never want to sit there and I feel like I'm I don't want to kill anybody's mm-hmm. dreams. Mm-hmm. But the fact is, if you're there on the show it doesn't matter if you really take the prize and win because i didn't win my season i came in fourth out of 10 people and look, look where i am now i always tell now. people i am the jennifer yeah. hudson of food you don't have to win the competition <laughs> to her. win the competition you know what i'm saying <laughs> it is oh good morning america please tune in this thursday yes. she'll be there she'll be making a thanksgiving spread for the masses she's awesome yes, i am now, saving your thanksgiving now and follow me on on social media too Follow you on all her so, social media. She also posts on my social media this Wednesday. Yes. She have the famous Chef Jamaica sweet potato pie mixed sweet with bread pudding. Sweet potato pie. I'm telling you there. what it is. Sweet potato pie meets bread pudding. Grandma's there bread pudding. Go. Bam! <laughs> on Money there Making Conversation. Go. Chef, I love you. That's an honest. I love, I love you. you. And happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Get yourself together. Plan, prep, and party. Do your thing this year. I love it. I love it. Stay strong. See you on Thursday. Good morning, America.